What's up? This is Patrick of RadicCards.com, and it's been a while since I recorded anything, and uh, a lot's happened since August, and so my upkeep on the blog has been infrequent. Uh, still good, but I just haven't spent a lot of time producing content on the blog. 2023 has been like the year of just a shred of different technical problems on the blog and the museum. It all started in March and up to yesterday really. Um, there's still some like small minor things I'm, I'm fixing, but the thing about running websites is that you're going to run across all kind of different strange things that you have to find, like figure out where they fit and what the problems are and what the, where the pieces exist and how they fit together with the main whole picture. And it's a lot. And, um, it can be stressful, especially when you're trying to troubleshoot to find the issue so you have to just keep a mental log of what has happened and then you track say so for example um, if something changes and then there's a problem you can assume that the change is the culprit of the problem now that's not always the case things like updates plugins not being updated um, incompatibilities with plugins and current versions of the software that stuff is a problem um when the software updates and has the feature that the plugin has, that that redundancy can cause problems. I've realized, and that's that's a huge issue. So I've had to overcome um, some things this year that were associated with those kinds of circumstances. And man, it's it's, it's rough. So there were a lot of times where I couldn't progress on the website for one reason or another because. Um, I was I had to fix this problem back in March. It was an issue with um, what was that? I think the March issue was the calendar that that, that I, I created a show calendar like in February, and then in March I didn't. I, I started. I was like I didn't. I don't really love the software, so I tried other kinds of software. Now what you have to do with that is deactivate and uninstall the current software you're using before you go and try other pieces of software. Otherwise, you'll run into these like redundancy issues where there's like two sets of the same toolbox and it doesn't fit anywhere in the garage, so to speak. And so it creates these problems. So I actually ran into an issue in March and it took the whole month of March, really. Uh, it took like four weeks to figure this out. I never fixed the issue. I just backdated my site to before the issue existed, which is one one way to do it. It's like one workaround. So the what I, I, I learned this early on in, 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 in blogging is back up your database and your website frequently. I'm on, on a weekly now, every Friday, I back it up, back it up, back it up. And so uh, there are manual requests, like I have to manually request to have these things backed up. And then I store the backup, so if there's a problem, I can just reinstate this backup and then everything's fine. I can go to, say, track the different things I'm working on um, and mark that as one thing that didn't work or did work. And hopefully that did work. Now, mind you, that was one of like, I think 13 different things I thought about trying. Um, I won't go into the details of it, but there were a lot of different things. I was like at the gym or at the skate park. I was like, well, I could try that. Or I could try this. Well, I could try this. And I was like, well, what's my last ditch effort is to backdate the site to before. And mind you, backdating it, I had to update and bring the site to current um, some blog posts, which was fine. But there were like eight blog posts I had to reinstate, which is not a big deal. But I was going through like scrubbing um, the site all the way back to like months prior. And I mean, there was a lot that went into that. And so I, I found just um, re-enabling a previous database install uh, did the trick to backdate it before the issue. Because I, I didn't know how to fix it. No, my host has a service where they can you can pay them. But even that process wasn't returning any results because I hadn't had any really no updates with my, my, my host about it. And I knew it was going to be expensive. And I was like, Oh, can we just backdate it and be done with it? Cause I, I, we never figured out what caused the problem. What I learned from that is that two things don't create redundancies in software. Like if you're using a plugin that say the calendar plugin, don't, while that one's installed, install a bunch of different calendar plugins and try them out at the same time because you already have one installed. So if you're going to use another one, deactivate it and delete it and then try another one. That way you only have one installed at a time. I learned that. I also learned to put the 
um, the calendar on its own subdomain. So I did that because the subdomain is essentially a unique website. And um, still tied to the main domain. It's still a Radicards uh, feature, but it's not on the Radicards.com blog. It's on its separate um, calendar.radicards.com subdomain, which is a unique standalone. And the only thing on that site, the only thing is just, they're just flyers for events. That's it. There's nothing else there. There's just a calendar for events. That's all it is. And so that that just maintains it off of Radicards, just keeps it off of it so that like, it's like a different backpack with different textbooks in it. August to October, those three months were dedicated to a footnotes problem that I had. I was using a footnotes plugin on the blog that required me to this process. It's manual per blog post, and it wasn't part of the, the WordPress architecture. So I wanted this 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 way to put footnotes and blog posts, and I, I found this way out like some years ago, four or five years ago now, I think. So I was using this this footnotes plugin, and I had probably used it on something like 140 some articles, like a lot. I mean, out of like over a thousand, it's not a lot, but it's like 15 percent ish. So the footnotes plugin was great, and then and then WP 6.3 came out. WordPress included a footnotes feature in the architecture of the software, which is great. But then I had this redundancy now. The footnotes plugin on top of this software that's built into the architecture of WordPress, which was not good because now we're going back to the issue I had in uh, March with the calendar plugin. And so uh, images that were being uploaded, I couldn't delete them in the media media library. And that was a problem. Uh, the site would break. What I learned after troubleshooting is that I was like, well, it's got to be the footnotes plugin. There's nothing else that can do this because I'm only having this issue when I save a footnote and save the, the article. It's not resolving on the front end. So what we did is we backdated the site to before the WP update. I deleted that foot that footnotes plugin and then I updated the site to WP6, whatever it is, and then problem solved. Okay, so there was that. And then I had to go back and scrub all the... What I did is I tracked all the articles that had footnotes um, notation. So I added a tag to them all. That way I could track which articles are using that. And I can go back and update them. And so I did that. I scrubbed like, uh, like I said, 140 plus articles, like fi almost 15% of the total yield on the side of blog posts. And then we, up, um, I, we took that. I did that on a demo subdomain, like a separate demo site that I built just for playing around with stuff like this, like troubleshooting. I built a separate website just for this purpose. Once that was done, I created a new a database, uh, moved all the content from the test site onto the new database, then pointed Radicards to the new database. And now we have the site is fixed. So that was my August to October problem project. So that's software issue number two of 2023. Number three came about in November uh, with the museum. And I was using some like uh, no right click software. I'm still using it. I was using the pro version of the software. It's great software. But what I ran into is what I was, uh, I was, I was, there's a settings dashboard in that plugin. You can kind of tell it to um, not add a watermark to a certain whatever image. And so because it would add a, a cool watermark to the the, 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 the images um, in addition to the watermark I already have, which is kind of cool. It's like a little red circle that says property of, and then it would say like, you know, um, um, protected. It's kind of a cool thing. I can always put those on my images. I won't, but I, if I wanted to, I could. So anyway, what I, it, the reason why I bought the pro version is I could, I could use as an admin, I can take the links themselves um, of the individual images and share them with friends, which was a great benefit. Uh, but I was running into problems like the feature where I'd share, it wouldn't add the cool watermark anymore. It stopped doing that. Like I deactivated it once for troubleshooting for another issue. And then when I reactivated, I lost that function and I couldn't reinstate it. And after an inability to work with the authors to try to find a workaround, um, I just kind of wanted to sunset it, deprioritize the use of it. So, and that would also watermark images I didn't want watermarked, like featured images of galleries. I didn't want those watermarked, but 
for like oh, years they were. And I was, I didn't, I never liked that. And so I wanted to go back to the free version that didn't have any of those problems. Like I don't need all the bells and whistles. If this is the issues that I have to deal with, I don't want to deal with it. It's still a great plugin. I just would prefer the free version of it because it doesn't, it's I'm not I'm 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 not having to deal with and juggle kind of the more technicalities of it. I lose the ability to share individual images, but that's fine. I mean, it's just kind of a perk, uh, something I like, but I, I can live without it. I was overthinking this big. I was like, man, I'm gonna probably have to go back to my test site, re recreate the whole website, and do the whole database, the repointing thing. I'm like, I don't want to do that. It's too much work. Right, there are over eight thousand images on the museum. It's a lot across the like Frank Thomas Gallery and the Medley Galleries and all those. And so I didn't want to have to go do that. So I got on the call with my host and I said, um, hey, here's the issue. If we can fix this issue, it would save me a lot of time. I won't have to go and recreate the site. Um, I can't, essentially what it was doing is all the images uploaded to the media library were broken. And those are separate from the gallery images. That's separate. The galleries, are they were un, un, unharmed. But the media library, there were like some like 27 images there for all the, the, the featured images for the galleries. And then it's like the, the, the background image. And there's like the, the a couple of ads on the, 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 like the journal page and things like that. So I got on the, the phone with my host last night. And I've been, I've kind of like assigned myself to one of their support rep managers who's really great. It's like, here's my issue. Let's see if we can fix this first. And within like 10 minutes, he identified there was there was a file in one of my folders in FTP that wasn't supposed to be there that that, that the plug this plugin generated and put it there, and that file was causing this problem uh, with the images being uploaded broken. So he retitled it, which deactivates it, and then fixed the problem. And I said, just delete the file. And if do I need? He's like, no. Just I was like, just delete it. Then I could have deleted it myself, but since I just want to confirm that he knows the file needs to be deleted. I can do it myself. I was looking at the same file he was. So he deleted it and then I'm now I just and I just re-uploaded all the images again and put them in their places and basically reinstated the, the look of the, the museum. Um and did some like an update of the journal with no notation. Oh, while we we're on the call, we also fixed my contact us page. SMTP was a problem, so I, I fixed that and I and I tested it and it works. So you can send messages through our contact us page directly from the website instead of going to like Facebook MetaSuite. You can just send in a message direct from our contact us page. That's been fixed. I also verified the sender information. So it'll have like our favicon when you open it. It'll look like a legitimate email. That those those things have been fixed. So here we are in like December, finally. Um, so it's been a, a year of of you know, technical problems. And mind you, all that time I was distracted by that stuff. So my production and blogging just was not a lot this year because of that. I try to get one per month, you know, but it's very minimal production this year because of the technical issues. Now the hope is 2024 won't be like that. It'll be like smooth breeze sailing. That's the hope, but whatever comes our way, we'll fix it. I'll fix it. I just would like to see less problems. I do my best to keep the site really lean. I don't ever install things I don't actually need for functioning. It might be cool and bells and whistles and fun and there's confetti and whatever. But if I don't need all that stuff, I, I don't want anything to do with it. Just keep it off. I'd rather just keep it at Party City. <laughs> I'm not going to buy it and put it in my car. I'm good. So uh, that aside, in August, I started teaching again. Um, so as some of you might know, I, I've in the past, I used to teach upper division marketing courses at a school in California. And so now I'm here in Texas and I was hired to teach marketing courses again at a, at a college. And so I'm doing that again. It's very, very fun and satisfying. And it's, it's exactly what I need to be doing. It's my calling to teach. It's my blog is a lot like that. It's like lecture. It's like educational. So this is me in person uh, delivering lectures. And so uh, I taught three, three courses this term and we're at the end of the finals week. We have, uh, um, I have one more session on Wednesday and then that'll be fall 2023 done really awesome fun time this semester. And so I'm looking forward to doing more of that in the spring. So that that's been another reason why I've been low production this year is that, uh, or this fall anyways, because of juggling the, the website technical issues and the teaching, um, both things are important to me to fix the, the, the tech, the website stuff and teaching is extremely satisfying for me. And so um, it's what I'm supposed to be doing. It's my calling. So, uh, I, I, I love that I, I can take the knowledge I take from my business and apply it to the classroom. So students can see like, there's one thing about learning the app, the, the content. There's nothing about 
seeing where it kind of fits in the ethos and the world. So I can, I can bring content from my business into the classroom in that way. And I, I really appreciate that. So that aside, um, Dallas Card Show, as you guys know, I, I, I typically will produce a blog post around Dallas Card Show after I get back. Now, again, from those first two things, those first two obligations and responsibilities, I've kind of set aside some of the, like the, the luxury things in my business. And so I didn't, I haven't been blogging about those things. What I've been doing, however, is collecting um, the pieces that I've acquired at these shows. And what I'll do is later this month is I'll produce a, I'll produce like a video that showcases all the, the cool, fun pickups from the, the remaining 2023 Dallas card shows. There were like five or six or a lot of them I haven't, I haven't talked about. So um, I'll just have like a catch all for those ones from, I think August to November, all those ones, all the small ones, all the big ones. So that'll come later this month. And then, um, I'll also do the top 10 list the for 2023. I'll do those two videos later this month too. Uh, my hope is that I have them done sometime within the next two weeks. That's kind of what's up with going on with me now. Um, now the museum it's back to its original function. And I thought that I was going to take this opportunity to update it to new, new software, new technology, new architecture, but because the authors of the, the architecture I'm currently using, they've, they've stopped maintaining the software. It's no longer being updated. It's not even, you can't even download it anymore. It's not even available anywhere. So, um, at some point I will need to update the architecture on the museum right now. I'm going to stick with what it is. Uh, let's see what's going on in 2024. More Dallas card shows. I've updated the, uh, the right sidebar on radicards.com when you're in the blog area. If you just click on blog at the top, uh, there's the calendar provided by Dallas card show that indicates when the next shows are. I think the June, July one is still to be announced, but everybody else is there. It's such an awesome, awesome show. I may or may not go to the national this year. I don't know. It just depends on funding and timing. It's in Cleveland. The venue's fine. I don't love the location because I have to travel to and from the location when I'm in Cleveland. I can't just like walk out of my hotel and walk over there like in Chicago. Uh, but if I don't go in 2024, I definitely plan on going in 25. So we'll see what happens there. So that's pretty much it for now for keeping you up to date on what's going on. Uh, I uploaded like something like 140, 150-ish, give or take, um, new flyers to the calendar. Some of them are older, and then some of them are newer. And I'll usually like whatever I have just goes up, even if it's in the background, like it's yesterday and before, even though it does, it's not relevant anymore. Just because I want like it's good for search. So people search for stuff and they'll find some of the old ones, and then they'll find the new ones. And so the old ones are used just for marketing of the new ones. And uh, it's been good to update that. I haven't updated the ca the the auctions site since I've sold. I haven't sold anything on on auctions for a while. Uh, the store is the same. Oh, we've got content and production for the store. Uh, SKUs restock. We're updating our SKUs with the new plastic. That is everything. If you guys have a, a comments or questions, please post them in the comments area, either on YouTube or on the blog. I always like comments on the blog. Thank you for tuning in to Radicars TV on Radicars.com. I'm your host, Patrick Reno, and until next time, enjoy collecting. If you like this content, please subscribe. Thanks. Enjoy collecting. <laughs>